This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Whether you have just bought your first iPhone, uh, switched to iPhone from Android, or are upgrading from an older generation and want to get the most out of your new iPhone, this is the video for you. I will cover everything you need to know from the iPhone 14s and iOS 16s essential new features, uh, top tips, tricks and key apps, as well as showing you how to optimize your iPhone in terms of battery life, performance, along with the essential settings to change. This is a longer video, but believe me, it is short uh, when compared to how many hours we all use our phones uh, each day, week and month. Believe me, this video will make your experience better and help you get the most out of your iPhone and iOS. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. But first, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 14 in this beautiful blue color. Uh, if you guys want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment your favorite feature of the iPhone along with your Instagram username and then follow me on Instagram where I will announce the winner on November the 27th. All right, so to start, iOS 16 adds some really awesome uh, new customization features to the lock screen. Now, right away, as you can see, we have a very different looking layout. Uh, and to customize this, what we're gonna do is press and hold on the lock screen, and this will bring up then this slider menu where we can actually choose uh, and quickly switch between any of our wallpapers that we previously set up. Now, if you have an Apple Watch, this may actually look familiar to you. Uh, this is kind of like changing the watch face on your Apple Watch. Now to add a new wallpaper, we're gonna go ahead and press the plus sign here in the bottom right of the screen. And then this will give us a range of options to choose from. Uh, so here we have a few featured options. You can see it will even suggest photos from your uh, photos that are on your iPhone. And then you can also have uh, weather related ones, emoji as well as specific colors here. Uh, so let's go ahead and choose one here. Uh, let's go with the weather. I like this one here showing our current location. Yes, I am based in London uh, in the UK. And then we can actually swipe through here uh, and see more options as we go. Uh, but I like this first one here, showing where we are uh, right on earth, or the second one here. And then once we've decided the uh, wallpaper, we can actually customize this further. Now for the first time, we can actually change the font of the time. So we'll go ahead and just tap on that. And you can see here we have these different options to choose from. We can also change the color, uh, or we can also have it set automatically sort of based on the wallpaper that you have. Uh, but if say you have a favorite color, this is a great opportunity to show it. Uh, I like the standard. Uh, let's go ahead and change the font to this nice, bold, classic look. I think that looks nice. And we'll go ahead and press the X here to exit out of that. And now our time has been updated. Now on top of that, we can actually also add uh, an additional widget that we want shown on the top. So we can have either the date shown uh, as well as the time of the sunset uh, and sunrise. I personally like to only have the date uh, and the day of the week shown. I think that's very clean and most important. Uh, and then beneath that, we have the option to add widgets. Now widgets are really cool uh, as this will allow you to add sort of mini apps for, for example, your calendar, uh, weather, reminders, or clocks. Uh, so this is great to get a lot of information at a glance right on your home screen at all, on your lock screen at all times. So a few of my favorites in particular are the weather app. This one's great. It will show you the max and minimum as well as the current temperature. Uh, aside from that, I like activity as well. Great if you have an Apple Watch to show if you've completed your rings. Uh, and I think that's usually about it, the ones I add. Now, the thing with widgets here uh, is that less is more. While they are very useful to have, uh, I would definitely only use ones that you really uh, find yourself using or getting something out of, as these do run constantly in the background, meaning they will take some battery uh, over time. So instead of using all four, like I would narrow it down to your favorite two uh, and use those instead. And then once we're done and happy, we'll go ahead and press add on the top right of the corner. And then we have the option to uh, select it or to set it both as a wallpaper pair to our lock screen as well as our home screen. And let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. We can go ahead and tap into it now. And here we have the new clock font. We have this new wallpaper uh, and of course the widgets as well. So at the moment here, we have the live temperature, which will show seven degrees currently, quite chilly here in London. Uh, and then of course our activity rings, if I were wearing my Apple Watch, those would be updated as well. Now let's go ahead and unlock the phone, slide to unlock and take a look at the home screen. Now, let me take you through a couple of the essential gestures uh, that we're gonna be using throughout this guide. So first of all, uh, to open and close an app, simply swipe from the bottom of the display where you see this bar. So we can go ahead and swipe down here to close an app just like so. Now to quickly switch between apps, uh, what you can do is swipe up and move to the right. And this will then bring us to the multitasking menu in which you will see uh, all of your open apps and you can quickly uh, tap into another app. 
But let's say if you're switching between two recent apps very quickly, what you can do is instead of swiping up and to the right, you can just swipe right to the uh, on the bottom of the screen to the left and right to quickly cycle between your apps. Uh, again, this is great if you're switching between two uh, apps that you're say taking notes from the other and reading a website on another, uh, quickly swipe along the bottom of the screen to cycle through them. And then to show your notifications, we're gonna just swipe down from the top middle of the display. And then this will show us all of the notifications right here. Uh, these will be grouped by app. And to clear a notification, simply swipe to the right and then we'll select clear. And then to exit this screen, we're gonna swipe up again from the bottom of the display. And then the last essential gesture uh, that I wanna show you is control center. Now to access the control center, we're gonna swipe down from the top right corner of the display and this will bring up the control center. Now this is a great way to quickly access core system functions. You have your music controls, brightness, uh, sound, you can trigger the flashlight on your phone as well, uh, turn on your Wi-Fi or your uh, Bluetooth quickly. This is a really useful uh, feature to have in the iPhone and later on in this guide I'm actually going to show you how to customize this as well to really suit your needs. Speaking of customization, uh, let's take a look at customizing the home screen. So first, let's take a look at moving apps on the home screen. Now, let's say I have the settings app and I were to want to move it here to the bottom right of the screen. What we're gonna do is press and hold on any icon, but in this case, we'll do the uh, settings app here. And then the secondary menu will show up, including the option to edit the home screen. Now, as you can see, all of the apps will start to uh, kind of jiggle. Uh, and this will then allow us to freely tap and sort of drag the app around. So as you can see, I've just moved it there. Uh, if say I wanna move it to the uh, page on the right, I can simply hold it on the right edge of the display. This will then move it to the right uh, and then bring it over to a second page. Let's bring it over here back to the front uh, and we'll put it right next to voice memos. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, uh, but there we go. It will sat, uh, sit in place right there. Now, this is also where we will have the option to remove an app. Now, as you can see, we do have this little minus icon uh, next to each of our applications here. So uh, let's take a look, for example, here at messages, uh, messenger. If I want to remove it, we'll tap the minus icon, and then we have the option to either delete the app or to remove it from the home screen. Now, deleting the app is going to delete the app on your phone, as the name suggests. Uh, this will then clear up some storage, and then we'll also hide the icon on your home screen. Alternatively, uh, if you select remove the app from the home screen, it's actually gonna keep it on your phone, uh, thus not clear up any storage, but it will hide the icon from your lock screen, uh, from your home screen, and will then allow you to still find it by searching through your app library, which you can find all the way on the right. If you swipe all the way to the right of your phone, here you will have a display of all of your apps, including apps that are hidden from the home screen. Now, why would you wanna do this? Uh, this may be a good way to, for example, hide any sensitive applications that you may have, uh, whether it be finance or personal apps uh, that you'd rather have more hidden. But again, this won't clear up any storage as the app will still be on your phone. Earlier, uh, when we were setting up the lock screen, uh, we, got, we went over one of my favorite features, and that is, of course, the ability to now add widgets. But we can actually also add widgets right to the home screen. Now, to, get, to access this menu, uh, once again, we're gonna just press and hold on any app. We're gonna select Edit Home Screen, and then in the top left of the display, we'll see a little plus icon and this will bring up our widgets menu. Now, this is a range of apps, a sort of mini apps that we can then add right to the home screen. So the same uh, tip here that, we, that I had for the lock screen applies here, where you have this less is more uh, mentality, at least that's what I would suggest, in a sense that yes, widgets are useful, but again, they will take battery over time. Uh, so let's go ahead and select a cool one here. I like this world clock one. Go ahead and tap into it. And then we have di uh, different options to choose from as well. So we can have more information shown. Of course, this will take up more space on your lock screen, uh, on your home screen. Then we have a smaller size as well. We can have one or four clocks. Uh, but let's go ahead and do uh, this one here. I like it. Go ahead and press add. And then it's gonna add it right to, the uh, to your home screen. And we can go ahead and move it around just like we would with any other app. So simply move it to a separate page, bring it back to the first one and right like so. Let's say I wanna put it next to the, uh, to the weather widget here. I really like the weather widget. Uh, I think it looks nice. And then we have the clocks right beside that. And then if we're ready, uh, we'll go ahead and press done to save our uh, new home screen. And then lastly, uh, to remove a widget, simply press and hold it, and then we can remove the widget, or we can select edit home screen and then tap the little uh, minus icon in the top left, and that will then remove the widget from the home screen. And again, press done when you are happy. Before we look at more features, settings, and top tips for the iPhone 14, I wanna give a big thank you to Surfshark for supporting the channel.
I consider a VPN to be essential, not just when at home, uh, but especially when traveling, as now more than ever, everything we do is done online. From browsing the web, streaming TV shows, to staying in touch with friends and family, and even banking. We'd like to think that our data is safe, uh, but as our digital and online presence grows, so does the need for proper security. And this is where Surfshark VPN comes in a service that protects your information and privacy by encrypting all data that you send through the internet, keeping anyone unwanted from accessing it. Another great reason to use a VPN uh, is because sometimes with streaming services, content can be blocked depending on the country that you're in. With Surfshark, you can solve that problem by simply changing your location. Choose from over 3,200 servers in 95 countries. For example, I love to watch the classic Pokemon series on the Japanese Netflix. Not only is this good for streaming, but can also be crucial for those in countries with heavily censored internet. Surfshark VPN supports all major platforms, and I find the app, also on the iPhone 14, to be super easy to use. By using my link in the description and code Dion, you will get 85% off your plan. Plus, you get three months for free. Surfshark also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you to Surfshark for supporting the channel. Now back to the iPhone 14. Now, the iPhone 14s uh, come with a range of new and pretty uh, cool safety features that you're going to want to make sure are activated. So to do this, we're going to tap into the settings app here, scroll down to where we see emergency SOS. And the first one we're going to want to turn on is call after a serious crash. Now, this is crash detection. Now, this means your iPhone will automatically detect if you're ever in a severe car crash and will then prompt you on the display to respond. And if you don't respond, it will actually automatically call emergency services on your behalf. If your phone is capable of this, again, if you have any of the new iPhone 14 models, it will be. I definitely suggest turning this on as this could be life saving. Now, additionally, another feature I highly recommend uh, is, the, is turning on the call with five presses. Now, on this particular phone, I do not have the option to turn this on as I don't have a SIM card installed, but you likely will, in which case you will be able to turn this on. And what this means is if you press the uh, side button, five times rapidly, it will automatically start a call with uh, emergency services. This is great if you're ever in a situation uh, where you need to subtly start a call, simply have the phone in your pocket, tap it five times, uh, and then you can call emergency services. Again, hope to never need either of these features, but they are useful to have running in the background. And then on the topic uh, of security and safety, we're gonna jump right into face ID and passcode. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is tap into this menu uh, and then we're gonna have to type in our password and there we go. Now, first of all, we can choose what we would allow uh, Face ID to do. So we can, of course, allow it to unlock the phone, uh, make purchases on the App Store, as well as fill in your wallet information and activate your Apple Wallet as well. I highly recommend doing this. Uh, Face ID is an incredibly secure and safe biometric uh, system that will authenticate and work only for you. So I definitely suggest turning all of these on. Uh, and then additionally, you have the option to enable Face ID with a mask. Now, previously you needed an Apple Watch to do this. However, now you can do this uh, right on your phone as well. And this will require you to scan your face one more time. Uh, but this means if you're wearing a mask, which these days, you know, we still wear from time to time, uh, you can still unlock your phone without having to type in your password. So really useful, definitely suggest turning this on. Uh, additionally, if you wear glasses like I do, uh, and perhaps sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, uh, it can be useful to also add a second look, uh, in which case Face ID will recognize you both with as well as without glasses. And then scrolling down this page, we have the require attention for Face ID. Now, this is something uh, that I do recommend turning on as this adds just an additional layer uh, to Face ID. And what this basically means is it's gonna require two things. In order to activate, it's gonna of course recognize, uh, first recognize your face, and then secondly, it's gonna make sure that you're actually looking at your phone. As if you do not make eye contact with your phone, but it still recognizes your face, it won't unlock. So this is really just an additional layer of security. Uh, so again, your phone will only be unlocked if you want it to. In other words, when you are in front of it and when you are actively looking at the phone. And then towards the bottom of, the, uh, of this page here are two very important sections. And the first here is what you basically allow your phone to be able to do whilst it is locked. 
my suggestion is turn everything off. Now there's two in my case uh, that I have on and that are the lock screen widgets as well as the live activities. Uh, as you can see, those are the widgets that we set up earlier right here as you do want these running uh, at all times. But other than that, you don't want anything shown on your phone uh, as of course, without your password or without your face, you don't want someone to be able to just grab your phone and for example, uh, use Siri to respond to a call, view your wallet, uh, reply to a message, uh, or most importantly, connect to accessories. So say your phone is stolen or lost, uh, you don't want anyone to be able to plug it into the computer uh, to look at your files or to erase uh, any content. So definitely suggest turning off all of these. As again, if someone doesn't have your password uh, or access to your phone, you don't want them to have access to any of these features. So turning them off gives you that peace of mind. And then speaking of peace of mind, beneath that we have the last option in this menu and that is erase data. Now this means that if you fail, uh, if you type in the incorrect password five, uh, 10 times in a row on your iPhone, it will automatically reset and restore and basically remove all of your data uh, that is on the phone. Now this is great if ever your phone is lost or stolen, ultimately what is most important is your personal data and this ensures that it will always be uh, eradicated if someone tries to uh, hack into your phone by guessing your password. In other words, it keeps your data safe and protected. And now let's take a look at the display. Now the iPhone 14s uh, come with an excellent display that is a joy to use, but let's make it even better by optimizing it in the display and brightness settings tab. Now first on the top here, we can switch between the light and dark mode settings. Uh, this is really great and I like to get the best of both by using the automatic timer. Now what this will do is it will automatically switch between the light and dark mode depending on the time of day. So as you can see, I have mine set to be light up until 10 p.m. meaning from uh, I believe it's 6 a.m., uh, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. till 10 a.m. it will be light and then in the evening slash early, early morning uh, it will be in dark mode as I find it to be a little bit nicer to look at especially when you have a lower brightness. However, during the day the light mode is best so this allows you to get the best of both. Now beneath that we have the option for True Tone. Now what is True Tone? Well, if I go ahead and turn this off you can see that the temperature or the uh, colors on my display slightly adjust. So the, the whites that you see on the screen are a little bit more blue, whereas if I turn it on, they get a little bit warmer with sort of a sort of an orangish hue to them. Uh, and what this basically does is it will automatically adjust the temperature of your display based on the temperature of the lights in your surroundings. So at the moment I have the studio lights uh, right above me here and as you can see it makes the display a little bit warmer. Typically that is what it will do and the point here is to make the display a little bit more comfortable to look at uh, and less straining on the eyes. This is a feature uh, that I really enjoy having on the iPhone as I do think it makes a difference in day to day. Uh, my only suggestion though or my key tip here is make sure you do turn this off if and when you are editing video and photos because as you can see this will affect the color, uh, color reproduction of the display making it technically a little bit less accurate. So if you are editing videos and photos, you want that accurate true to life look, in which case I would turn this off. Uh, but for any other use case, turning it on just for comfort uh, would be my advice. And the same thing goes for Night Shift. Now Night Shift is similar to True Tone, but it takes a much more uh, drastic approach. As you can see, my screen almost looks orange uh, compared to the white backdrop, this marble uh, backdrop that I have here. Uh, and what this will do is it will actually remove or limit the amount of blue light that is emitted from your display. Now, blue light, if you don't know, can interfere with your sleep. Uh, for some people, it can also cause headaches uh, and generally isn't very good for you. And of course, our tech emits this 24-7. Uh, so turning, this, uh, turning on night shift will limit the amount of blue light. So typically, I like to actually have this scheduled to only be during the night. Uh, so this way, late at night when I'm using my phone, uh, I will have this limited blue light uh, exposure. But again, during the day, I prefer to keep this off as I do want a slightly more uh, natural look on my phone. And again, just like with True Tone, don't use Night Shift if you're ever uh, editing videos or photos as chances are everything will come out orange. And beneath that, we have the auto lock option. Now, my suggestion here is to set it anywhere from uh, 30 seconds to around three minutes. I have mine set here a little bit longer for so that my phone doesn't go asleep while I talk with you. Uh, but generally speaking, keep it on the shorter side. Now, if you keep this on to 30 seconds, that means that after 30 seconds of inactivity on your phone, it will automatically go to sleep. Uh, this is great not only for battery, but of course also for security. Uh, say you leave your phone unlocked, it will lock quite quickly after you uh, do so. My only tip here, 
never select never uh, because never will obviously, as the name implies, always keep your screen on. And this is not good for your battery and also not good for the health of your display as with any OLED display, which is the kind of displays that we have on these new iPhones. Uh, if you keep it on for an extended period of time on a static image, this can cause burn-in, uh, which is irre irreparable damage to the display. So definitely never select never, uh, keep it around three uh, minutes or so. And then lastly, uh, in this menu, I'm going to show you raise to wake. Now, if you are very conscious about battery life, you could choose to turn this off. Personally, I like to have this on. Uh, what this basically means is if you put your iPhone on a table, your iPhone or your iPhone will detect when it's picked up and then automatically unlock the display. So all you have to do is look at face ID and swipe to unlock. It just kind of removes that first step of having to press the side button uh, or tap the display. So I like to have this on. Earlier in the video, uh, I showed you the gesture to access the control center, uh, but now we're gonna look at customizing it as this really allows you to get the most out of it. Uh, so to find this, we're gonna go back into the uh, main screen of the settings app and we're gonna scroll down to where we see the control center. Ah, there it is, almost lost it for a second. Uh, there we go, that is just beneath the general tab here. Uh, what we're gonna do is tap into that and uh, before we look at customizing it, there's this first option here, which will allow you to enable or disable uh, access within apps. Now, if say you are a mobile gamer uh, and you hold your phone like this, you're often swiping from the corners of the display, uh, you may not wanna accidentally uh, trigger your control center and thus cover the content that you are looking at. So in this case, you may wanna turn this off. Uh, I, however, like to have it on as I find this really useful uh, to have uh, on at all times. If you were to turn this off, this means you can only access the control center from your home screen uh, or the lock screen if your phone is unlocked. Um, beneath that, we have the option to customize this. So here we have a range of the included controls. Now, if I open up the control center, you'll see that this uh, section specifically refers to this lower half of the display of the control center as this upper section will be uh, basically, it will remain like this. There's no way to customize this further, but these bottom controls can be. Uh, so what we can do here is we can uh, add and remove. So let's say we take the torch, go ahead and remove it by pressing the little minus button. And you can see if I swipe down, we no longer have that option. Uh, beneath that, we have the more control section, uh, which will give us a range of more options to add to the control center. So let's say I wanna bring back the torch, simply press the plus button here. It is now back. Um, we can also move it around, so rearrange. At the moment here, it's in the bottom right. Uh, let's say I want it up here in the top left. Simply press and hold this little uh, sandwich menu, bring it up to the top, and then there's the torch right there, which will activate the flashlight. Very useful. Uh, also, a quick tip, by the way, you can actually press and hold this to adjust the brightness of the torch. So if, say, you want it to be a little bit more dim, uh, say, late at night, you can do that, and brighter, you can swipe it up like so very useful to have. So that's how you uh, customize the control center. Next, I wanna show you something uh, that I think a lot of people are really gonna like, uh, and that is the ability to turn on haptics for your keyboard. So we're gonna tap into the sound and haptics menu, uh, and then beneath that, we will find an option for keyboard feedback. Now we have the option to turn on a sound, which will enable that little click sound when you type. Uh, please don't turn this on. I find this very annoying when other people have this on, uh, as many do. Uh, but what I do like is the haptic feedback. And this will create a very slight, very subtle vibration anytime you tap on the keyboard uh, with any key that you press. I don't know why, but it kind of brings me back to those, uh, the good old days of those Blackberry keyboards. Uh, though I don't know if I should say good old days. I wouldn't really want to go back to there. Uh, but I think a lot of us have good memories from those times as well. Uh, this kind of reminds me of that. It gives you a little bit more feedback uh, and almost makes the phone feel a little bit more mechanical. Uh, so I like to turn this on. And this is where you find that right in the keyboard uh, feedback setting beneath in, uh, in the uh, sound and haptics uh, option. And this is new with iOS 16 as well. When we were looking at the control center, uh, one of the options you may have seen or noticed was this focus button here. Now, what is this and what does this use for? Uh, well, let's take a look. So what we're gonna do is go into settings and uh, we're gonna scroll down to where we see focus, which we will find right there. And what we can do here is set up different profiles uh, for when you use your phone. So swiping back into control center, we can go ahead and activate focus mode. So we can either uh, go to do not disturb. We have personal, work, sleep, uh, mindfulness, and fitness. And we can also add new profiles, which I'll show you in a sec. Uh, but basically what each of these profiles do is have a uh, set of rules for what kind of notifications you want your phone to receive, whether it be uh, notifications from apps, 
messages or calls. And this is really great depending on what you are doing. So at night, I actually have my do not disturb activate automatically from late at night till 6 a.m. Uh, and this means that all notifications with exceptions from uh, certain family members and friends and loved ones will not come through or at least will they'll come in, but they won't wake up my phone uh, and thus, you know, light up the room late at night. Uh, or say at work, you don't want to receive calls or certain notifications from apps, simply tap that in as well, as well as a fitness one. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a new custom focus mode uh, and show you what the options are. So back in settings here, we're going to go to the top right and then we'll press the plus button and let's create a custom one. So uh, let's say we are avid readers. Yes, uh, we'll go ahead and tap onto reading here and we can, now we can go ahead and customize this focus mode. Now, what we can do, first of all, uh, is we can actually choose which people uh, we want notifications from. So first, it's gonna automatically silent all notifications that come in, but we can exclude certain people or apps. So let's add a few here. So let's say in people, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add, uh, let me say my uh, fiance here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add her. There we go. And she will now be added as you can see. Uh, and this is the only person from whom I will allow notifications when my reading mode is activated. Uh, and then for other people, we have a specific sub menu for calls as these can be more important. So let's say uh, we want only contacts to be able to call you a specific contact group uh, or uh, favorites as well. I'm gonna just allow all calls uh, just to be safe. I hate missing delivery, so we're gonna turn that on. Uh, and then there we go. So as you can see, we've just added one person. So this means all notifications will be silenced with exception uh, from her, uh, which I'm sure she will be uh, very happy about. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and tap into apps here. And this is a very similar, uh, similar menu where we can allow specific applications. So let's say, uh, uh, let's scroll down here. Let's see, uh, FaceTime is important. We'll add FaceTime, um, mail, and then messages and messenger. Just to get, just to name a few here. Go ahead and press done and as you can see these will now be added and we will allow notifications only from those apps now we can also actually add a specific wallpaper uh, and a specific lock screen as well i'm not going to show you that today but you can set this up and this shows how far you can really customize this uh, creating almost a separate phone for this uh, for this specific uh, work uh, well focus mode and then beneath that, we also have the option to uh, schedule this so you can have this turn on automatically. This is useful uh, if say you have a work focus mode, say you have nine to five job, have it automatically activate from nine to five. And that's it, once you're happy, uh, we'll go ahead and go back here. And now if we go into the control center, tap and hold on the focus mode, we have this new one, uh, which will be the reading one. Go ahead and activate that. And we'll see we have this little uh, icon here on the top left, which indicates that the focus mode has been activated. And this will also automatically carry over to all of your devices, whether it be your Apple Watch, Mac, or iPad, uh, meaning that the same rules will apply on those other devices. And this brings us to probably one of the most important parts of this guide. And these are the two most essential uh, settings to change when it comes to saving battery on your iPhone. Now, iPhones have pretty good battery life. Uh, in fact, the iPhone 14 here can last me all day and evening uh, with around 25, maybe 30% remaining. Uh, this is in part thanks to the way I've set up my phone. So to do this, uh, first, I'm gonna show you to uh, really save battery. What you're gonna want to do is limit the uh, notifications that you have coming in. So what we're gonna do is click on settings and we'll select notifications. And then what we're gonna do is scroll down and here we have a long list of all of our applications that are installed on the phone and every single app is gonna to want to send you notifications. Uh, but the reality is most apps really don't need to. Uh, for example, here I have a headphones app. This is a Sony application. I don't need notifications from this app. Uh, other ones, iTunes store, don't need it either. Uh, EE, don't need it. Music, don't need it. News, don't need it. Uh, basically, Screen Time, Shazam, all these applications, uh, TV, don't need to be sending me notifications. So what I suggest doing is tapping into these one by one, and then you can also customize this further. You can have it not show on the lock screen, uh, but personally, I like to turn it off entirely for apps that don't need it. This way, only important applications, uh, messaging apps, food delivery apps, uh, maps, uh, maybe banking apps, uh, those I will allow to send uh, to come in, others I just don't. And this saves your screen from waking up more often, it saves your phone from vibrating more often, uh, and your speaker from activating, and this, as a result, will save you lots of battery. If, say, you limit your notifications from 150 per day on average uh, to just around 80, trust me, this will make a very significant difference. So go through all of your applications uh, and really customize this to your needs. 
And then the second uh, most important battery tip is background app refresh. So to find this, we're gonna go into general and then we'll select background app refresh. And here it's the same story. So we have a list of all of your apps. And as you can see, uh, I would say maybe half, just yeah, I would say around half of my apps are turned off. Amazon, uh, App Store, these are all apps here. That one doesn't need it either. Uh, Best Fans doesn't need it either. Uh, so we have all these apps that just don't need to be running in the background. Now you do have the option to turn it off for all apps, but this I do not suggest doing as there are certain apps that you would want to be updated at all times. Uh, take for example, your maps, if, especially if you're using uh, turn by turn directions. I find messaging apps are useful as well so that it keeps your thread open. Uh, and perhaps movie or a video apps as well, like Netflix, so you don't lose where you are in your show. Uh, but other apps, just turn them off as they don't need to be running in the background, taking battery all the time. Next, I wanna show you a really cool feature uh, that is exclusive to Apple, and that is AirDrop. Now, under the general settings, uh, we're gonna tap on AirDrop, and that's this option right here. And AirDrop is a great way to uh, wirelessly and quickly send files from any uh, Apple device to another. So I can send uh, files from my iPhone to my iPad to my Mac. Uh, and this can range from a small photo uh, to a big video. So you can, regardless of the file size, uh, you can quickly send them over Wi-Fi. I think it uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It works very, very well uh, and, and is very seamless. But one error that I do see some people do is that they have their discoverability setting set to everyone. And this means that anyone around you can find your iPhone and request to send you files. Now I've seen this done in public. Uh, I've even seen this on the news where people uh, are being almost harassed because people are sending them random photos. Uh, and to basically disable this from ever occurring, uh, switch your airdrop settings to contacts only. And this means that only contacts in your iPhone will be able to discover your phone and request to send you files. And this way you will never get a, a file that you don't expect from say someone random in public. All right, so now I wanna show you uh, some really cool tips and tricks within Apple's apps uh, that are new with iOS 16. So first is live text in photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my photos app and here I have a picture uh, of my computer screen and you can see this picture contains some text. Now let's say I have a picture uh, of a uh, slideshow presentation or a whiteboard uh, from a university lecture. What I can then do is copy and paste text right from the photo. So let's say I wanna copy this title uh, somewhere over the rainbow. What I'm gonna do is simply press and hold over the text and then I can select it like I would any other text, uh, be it in a document or email or web page, and then you can see it is selected. Go ahead and press copy, and then I'm gonna go into a notes document, double tap, select paste, and as you can see, it will just have copy text right from the photo. This is really great, I love this feature. Uh, I've used it many times, uh, even if say I found a product uh, in a supermarket that I wanna look up later, simply take a picture of the box, copy and paste the text, right from there. A way to know uh, if your photo has text that can be copied, uh, what you can do is tap on the photo and then you'll see this little icon appear here in the bottom right. Uh, we'll go ahead and tap that and here it will automatically highlight all of the text that it detected, uh, which will also allow you to copy all of the text from the screen with one tap. Very useful. Next, let's go into the camera app. Now, one of the new features uh, that came with iOS uh, 16, or more specifically, the iPhone 14s, is action mode within the camera app. So what we're gonna do is go into video mode, as this is specifically for video mode, and then here in the uh, top left, or I suppose bottom left of the display, we have two options. First is to turn on the flash. You can have this on continuously while you're recording. Uh, and then secondly is we have this sort of little running man uh, with a arrow uh, with sort of a sign struck through it. Go ahead and tap that, and as you can see, that will activate action mode as the uh, name just saw here on the top of the display. Now this will automatically change you to the ultra wide lens, so that will go to the 0.5x uh, ultra wide lens, and as you can see, will result in much more stable footage. Uh, now I have used this before, and if you've seen my iPhone 14 review, uh, you'll know that this does make a very significant difference when compared to the previous, say, iPhone 13, which doesn't have action mode. So if ever you're gonna be filming uh, in a shaky scenario, say you are walking or moving a lot, uh, tap this little icon in the top left here to activate action mode and then to get out of it, simply tap it again and then action mode will be off. For this next tip, we're gonna jump into the Notes app. Now, Notes is a very useful way to quickly uh, type down some information on your iPhone and then have it also sync and saved across all of your other Apple devices. Uh, but sometimes you may have some information that you want to protect or keep a little bit more secure, uh, such as my uh, top secret note here. 
uh, as this emoji would imply. Now, what we can do is actually lock this note and make sure it is password protected or face ID protected. Now to do this, we're gonna press and hold on the notes document, and then we actually have the option to lock the note. And then as you can see, this will uh, mean that it will require either your iPhone's password, that's the one you use to unlock your phone, or you can create a separate and new password specifically for that note. Though I would definitely not recommend uh, ever storing information like passwords in pure text form, like in a notes document. Uh, if so you have addresses or phone numbers or something that's more personal, uh, you can protect a specific note and lock it to keep people from accessing it. One of the things we all probably uh, do most on our phones is text, and more specifically uh, use iMessage. And in iMessage, Apple's added some really neat features. Uh, firstly, you can actually edit a message after it is sent. Uh, and then secondly, you can also unsend a message. Now these are really useful uh, to have. So let's say I'm gonna type this message here. Uh, we send, hey, go ahead and send that. Uh, and let's say I made a spelling mistake or I wanna change that to something else. I can then press and hold, and then we have the option to edit. Uh, and then we can go ahead and correct it. Uh, I can add, let's say I wanna add an emoji this time, go ahead and add a smiley face, uh, and that has then been edited. Now the uh, recipient, so in this case, the one receiving the message will see that the message has been edited. However, will not be able to see the edit history. And you can edit a message for up to 15 minutes after it has been sent. Uh, but let's say we want to uh, retract this message and delete it entirely. We can press and hold and we can actually undo send to unsend the message uh, and it will then disappear from the thread. Now again, uh, the other the recipient will be able to see that the message uh, has been deleted, but will not be able to see what the content of that message is. Uh, and just like with editing, this can be done for up to 15 minutes after your message is sent. This next small tip applies more to the uh, iPhone 14 Plus and 14 uh, Pro Max models, the ones with the larger displays, as what you can actually do uh, is press and hold on the emoji icon on your keyboard, uh, sorry, on the globe icon on the keyboard, and you can actually select the one-handed keyboard. So I'm left-handed, so let's say I wanna uh, move it here to the left, and as you can see, this will then move the entire keyboard just a little bit to the left of the display, making it much easier to reach uh, both ends of the uh, keyboard. This is great if you're walking out in public, uh, quickly responding to a message with one hand while you got your coffee in your other hand uh, late to that meeting, uh, then this way you can quickly do that and then simply press and hold the globe to center it once again and switch back to the full screen keyboard. And this brings us to Safari. Now first, uh, let's go ahead and jump in the app here. What I'm gonna show you is how to see all of your open tabs. So first tap on the uh, URL bar that you'll find on the bottom of the display and then we'll see this icon here in the bottom right, and this will quickly give you a glance of all of your open tabs. Now from here, you can swipe to the left to close a tab or press the X button to uh, quickly close your open tabs. Now, another neat feature uh, is you can more quickly switch between tabs by swiping on the URL bar and actually swiping to the left and right to quickly switch between two open uh, web pages. The same way you can actually uh, switch between two open apps if you swipe on the bottom of your display uh, as we looked at earlier. The same thing applies here, but in this case, you're swiping on the URL bar, very useful. And then also in Safari, uh, let's say there's a web page that I access often, uh, let's say the Google homepage. What I wanna do is I wanna add that to my home screen to more quickly find and access it. What you can do is press this little uh, share button in the bottom of the display, and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says add to home screen. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna almost look like an app, so we can actually name it how we like. Uh, there is the icon as well. Then we'll go ahead and press add. And as you can see on our home screen, we now have this Google web page app. Now I say web page app because it isn't really an app. All it is is a shortcut to the Google website. And this is great as this means you can quickly with one tap open the Google website uh, from anywhere. And uh, this is useful as of course this doesn't take up any storage and you can do this for any website that you like as well. Uh, in terms of removing it, it will act just like any other app. Simply delete the bookmark like so and then it will be removed from your home screen. I wanna now show you uh, a few more really essential settings, uh, and the first has to do with Siri. Now Siri, although not the best uh, digital assistant in the world, it is still useful. Uh, I find myself using it throughout the day to set a reminder, uh, ask the temperature, uh, or check my calendar, do these kind of things, but how you activate Siri really matters. So what we're gonna do is tap into settings, and then we're gonna scroll to where it says Siri and search. Now, this will give us the option for how we want Siri to be activated. Now, we have the option to either use the, uh, the command phrase, which is, hey, I'm not gonna say the full phrase to activate your series. Uh, we can go ahead and turn that on, or we can press and hold the side button to activate it. 
as you can see, if I press and hold the side button, that will then bring up uh, Siri like so as well. Now, using the first option with the command phrase in which you just say, hey, to activate it is nice because of course it is hands-free, but this also means that the microphones in your iPhone will be constantly on and listening for that activation phrase. And this too is gonna take a lot of battery over time. So my suggestion, turn this first feature off uh, and just use the side button. Very easy to activate Siri uh, and have her on uh, whenever you need her. So definitely suggest turning this off. Uh, the same goes if you have an Apple Watch, I also recommend turning this off or on your iPad or even your Mac, as again, this will take up a lot of battery over time. Now, this next tip uh, I think is crucial and I really recommend this to all iPhone users and that is to back up your phone. Now, if your phone ever gets lost or stolen, as I mentioned earlier, uh, ultimately what is most important is your personal data. And if you have a backup of your phone, this means that if ever your phone is lost or stolen, you can get a new one and restore from a backup to not lose any of your files. Now, there's multiple ways to back up your iPhone. You can do this either to your computer uh, via the lightning cable, uh, and this works, but will take up a quite a lot of storage on your computer. Plus, it's kind of a manual process. You have to plug it in every day or every week or however often you choose to do it, sync it, get the backup going. Uh, so the best way to do this, I think, is through iCloud. Now, to do this, we're gonna tap on your name in the top uh, middle of the display here, uh, and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says iCloud. Go ahead and tap that. And then here we have the option to turn on or off iCloud backup. Now, this means that your phone will automatically uh, backup through iCloud every night when it's plugged into power. This means your backup will always be up to date and it's completely seamless and done in the background. Now, as standard, uh, you only get five gigabytes of iCloud data, which will probably not be enough for a backup of your phone, uh, but you can actually have different plans. So you can go anywhere from, uh, I believe for 50 gigabytes, it's 99 cents. And then uh, 200 gigabytes like I have, it's only $2. And my suggestion is to do this. Uh, just the peace of mind, knowing that for $24 a month, uh, I will always have a backup of my phone on iCloud. Uh, honestly, it is more than worth it. So I definitely recommend doing this. Uh, this is probably the only service from Apple that I can wholeheartedly recommend paying for. Uh, and that is iCloud and that extra storage just for your backups to always make sure your data is safe. Not to mention, this also means that if ever you were to upgrade in the future to a new phone, it makes it super easy to instantly mirror your old phone to your new one. In other words, carry everything over uh, with just a couple of taps and having the phones nearby. This is super easy. So definitely recommend setting this up. Believe me, uh, it will be worth it. And all right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. That brings us to the end. Uh, congratulations if you've made it to the end. This has been quite a long video, uh, but I hope you've learned a lot as we went throughout uh, each of these tips, uh, neat features, uh, as well as settings to change. Believe me, this will definitely improve your experience with the iPhone. Uh, and if you haven't seen them yet, I've also done guides for the Apple Watch. If you wanna check that out, I'll be sure to leave that linked at the end of the video. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video uh, and for supporting my channel. It really means a lot uh, and really encourages me to do more of this as this is ultimately what I love to do. And that is to create tech videos that ultimately help you learn more about your products uh, and make better buying decisions. So if you guys have any questions about anything we looked at today or anything iPhone related, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching guys. I wish you all a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.